Unlike other types of pulling vehicles, the two-wheel drive pullers did not evolve over a period of time. The first two-wheel drive trucks were custom built for pulling. This class has remained true to its street truck predecessor, in that the bodies have to remain stock. Now that fiberglass car bodies are being used, the variety of body styles in this division has grown enormously. The two-wheel drive trucks are limited to one motor, and every modification possible is made to get the most out of those big areas V8. These trucks literally scream down the track. First up tonight is Jim Lyons in stitches. Jim is a veteran puller, but he knows that in this sport, your reputation is only as good as your last pull. challenge to the rest of the field and nobody loves a challenge better than the Florida Cracker. Chris Holdorf has a tough act to follow. He hates to be shown up and he's determined to run his supercharged Ford out of the arena. has done it. Chris proves again that he's at his best when he's backs to the wall. The pressure is on as Mark Hare backs up to the big sled. You like to drive this down I-85, huh? Yeah. This will wake up your neighbors. A beautiful S10 Chevrolet called Spike from Springfield, Ohio. From the Buckeye State Park. A great, great run. A good run for Spike. It looks like he's going to come up a little short. He's going to come up just a little short down there. 192.89 for Spike. We're really seeing some great runs tonight here in Montgomery. Here's a one-of-a-kind rig getting in place for the next run. Nick McPherson from Circleville, Ohio. This is a 1923 model tape bucket. He's running a Rodak engine. The green light is on. Here we go. Six and Burson. Oh! Oh! He has blown a motor! He has blown an engine! Parts were coming out, it looked like, from underneath the motor. They might have torn up a motor pretty bad. I don't know. They might have put, they might have torn up an engine. It doesn't look good at all. These custom-made powerhouse engines don't come cheap. That blowout is going to cost Mr. McPherson dearly. Next up is Ken Lamont in the big red El Camino. Oh, look at this. Yeah, I love it. I love it. A 19. 85 Chevrolet El Camino. Let's go, Chevrolet! Go, go, go! The Midnight Express full pull. Ken Lamont out of Crossville, Illinois, has just taken the lead. The Midnight Express almost takes the sled out of the building with a full pull. Can anyone beat it? Here comes Wayne Roush in the little red truck, a Dodge, to give it a try. All right, Dodge fans. First Dodge of the evening. A 1982 Dodge Rampage from Dublin, Ohio. He lives just a 
about a mile down the road from Bobby Rahal. The 582 Keith Black Chrysler Hemi engine. This is the same engine that Shirley Muldowney runs in drag racing. Comes up a little short. A good run, but it will only win ninth place for the little red dot. Young Mark Miller from Richmond, Virginia is up, and he's spoiling for a pull-off. Hey, ladies! He's 21 and single. 21 and single. From a beautiful part of America. From near Williamsburg, Virginia. Mark Miller. Effort by the Mini Brute, but not good enough against this top field of competitors. Chris Holdorf is up again in his Ford minivan, and he's mad. He thought he had it in his pocket, but Ken Lamont's full pull popped his bubble. The Florida Cracker is feeling and out for luck. do it but Chris's first run is still holding him in second place for now now Richard McPherson is coming up again he needs a full pull to keep it alive 1984 Chevrolet he won last night he farms approximately 1,000 acres tricky Dick McPherson He's not going to win tonight. No, he is not going to win tonight. McPherson does not repeat his victory of last night. He'll finish in 10th place. Gary Rodebush is up next in the Bushwhacker. He'll have to go the distance to keep up with Ken Lamont. Run. That will keep the Bushwhacker in the top four or five for sure. Here's a real classic to end up the event, the fast forward with Chuck Chitwood at the wheel. Chuck's the last chance for the Ford fan. 1955 Chevrolet. He has several video scores, that's his business. do it five feet short. Not quite enough to beat Lamont's full pull. Ken, you made a full pull the only one in the class so far. What went right for you? Well, to tell you the truth, the truck was a little light on the front, but the way my truck set up, with the horsepower it's got on a track like this, I can make the horsepower work. I don't really think I'll be going with We'll be right back with more on tonight's winner, Ken Lamont, the Midnight Express. I started pulling. The first time I went down track, I was 12 years old. That's too many years ago, 16 years ago. It was on a garden tractor, a single cylinder garden tractor. First ran I made was at a local county fair pole in Illinois. I got last, <laughs> dead last. My granddad came up to me. He looked at me and he said, now son, if you're gonna stay in this game, something's gotta change. Now you're either gonna do good or you're gonna quit. See, his theory, it, it isn't how you play the game, it, it's, it's to win when you play the game. Which, I could see what he was saying. If it was my grandson, I'd done the same thing. But I pulled garden tractors until, oh, I guess I was about 18. 
And about that time, they started these two-wheel drive trucks on, a, on just a few exhibition runs I saw, and I thought, you know, that's, that's neat. I really like that. And I could see that the two-wheel drives were going over good with the crowd appeal. Uh, when the front ends come up in the air, the crowd's just, it's something I can really identify with. Uh, the crowd always is up for a two-wheel drive class. And I, I watched that and I thought, boy, I, I got to get back in this. I, I guess it was kind of like uh, the alcoholic taking that first drink again, you know. I just, I got enough smell of it that I had to get back into this game. It's, it's tough and it's a lot of work and sometimes I wonder why in the world I'm doing this, but if I quit, I don't know what else I'd do. I know I'd be back doing it again, so I guess I'm in it to stay. Last night I had a good run. Uh, I ran a truck a little light on the front because I thought that's what it was going to take and I put on a real good show. Today, I hope I can do the same thing. I hope I can come back a winner again, but that's probably one of the main things about the sport. Nobody's going to win all the time. If you can't take getting beat and being on down the pack, you just will quit now because you're not going to win all the time. No way are you going to win all the time because when I'm out there saying that I'm going to do my best and I'm going to try and win, there's 12 other guys out there saying the same thing and they want to try to do the same thing. Redman TNT All-American Pulling Series runs into your hometown this summer. See the most powerful sport on earth in Hopstead, Indiana, July 10th and 11th at the Tri-County Speedway. Triple track action with pulling mud and monster trucks at the Nationwide Motor Nationals in Cleveland Municipal Stadium, 7.30 Saturday night, July 11th. Then the Big Iron roars into Texas to the Red River Rodeo Arena, July 17th and 18th. Asheville, North Carolina hosts Redman and TNT July 24th and 25th at Asheville Speedway. Then back to Indiana to the Vigo County Fair in Terre Haute, July 27th and 28th. And the Clearfield County Fair in Clearfield, Pennsylvania, August 7th. Finally, the power moves to Charleston, South Carolina at Somerville Speedway, August 7th and 8th. Catch the Redman TNT All-American Pulling Series in your hometown. Find out when we're coming next week on Power Tracks here on ESPN. After more than 20 years of experimentation and innovation, these monster powerhouses look more like multi-engine drag rails than farm tracks. Tubular steel frames, multiple disc slipper clutches, and the most recent advances in power components are combined in custom-constructed pulling machines that generate as much as 10,000 horsepower. Up to six supercharged v 8 or three V12 airplane engines, the heaviest of the four modified classes. First up is the general, driver Gardner Stone. Gardner is the undisputed master of the big Allison aircraft engines that power his vehicle. All right, now ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at an engine, two of them that are over 40 years old. This is the legendary Allison aircraft engine. This is what this Budweiser runs in the unlimited hydroplane boat. Here we go, Gardner Stone, come for a The general is smoking tonight with an excellent first pull. It'll be a tough run to beat, but Robert Elliott is going for it. His machine, the Fancy Farmer, powered by three big V8. Here's the Fancy Farmer, running three Keith Black Chrysler Hemi motors. You're looking at somewhere around 4,500. Once the front end is up, they have to steer these brutes with the brakes on the rear tire. John Carlton is backing up in the Virginia Farmer, a pulling machine with a unique...